Good afternoon. Um, here's Amos Nascimento. I teach philosophy at PPPA, and this is the project. Uh, normative innovation uh, is part of our project, the Tri Campus Interdisciplinary Research Cluster on Human Interactions. And normative innovation, that's the, the concept we created and we've been exploring for 10 years. Uh, this is a Tri Campus, to, it involves Tacoma, Seattle, and Bothell. Uh, this is me. Uh, part of what I do in this project is related to my previous experience in living in different countries, traveling, studying with those two uh, philosophers, Karl Otto Appe and Jürgen Habermas, and teaching those places, and exploring in terms of research and publication some of the topics we develop in this research project. Now, uh, this is called the High Norm Cluster for short. Human Interaction and Normative Innovation. And when we say innovation, think in technology, but this is an innovation in terms of values. Uh, this project uh, is being funded by all those places and involves about 20 people here at UW and three campuses. Uh, we follow the tradition of the Frankfurt School. As a matter of fact, they just celebrated about 100 years. If you want to know, there's a big uh, publication here that shows the 100 years of, of research involving all those folks. There are practically three generations. And the second generation is uh, Jürgen Habermas and Karl Otto Appel. And here you see some of us interacting with them through our trips, uh, through our research stays there in Frankfurt. Uh, this is another example. This is Bill Talbot, professor of philosophy there uh, in Seattle, He's spending time of his sabbatical there in Frankfurt. We've had about five or six of our uh, faculty going there and some of their faculty coming here as well. Uh, remember, this is going on for 10 years now. Critical revision. Great, we go there, we learn, but we have something, a criticism. Uh, that framework is still Eurocentric. So we want to exp expand it through global interactions and our high norm members develop all those things, multiculturalism, gender norms, religion, immigration, etc. And those are the main topics we're researching. Human rights, ethics, law and politics, gender, race and culture, challenges, democracy, cosmopolitan frameworks. It's a lot, right? But we have 20 people plus our partners, so lots of folks there. Uh, and the term again is normative innovation, how values evolve. Uh, so how do we go beyond Eurocentrism, connections to Latin America? Here's, for example, a publication that we did with folks in Brazil, if you want to browse, it's right here. Um, uh, Enrique Dussel, a very important leader of uh, liberation ethics, was here with us twice. Connections in Africa, you know, uh, we have this tendency of thinking of the uh, Anglo-European uh, connection, uh, North Atlantic, now we are working with Kenya, South Africa as well, where we have important history of human rights issues. Uh, connections in Asia, some of you probably attended a, a lecture by our partner in Taiwan, Professor Mab Huang. Uh, as a matter of fact, in China today, there are much, many more interesting developments than in the United States. China included in its constitution human rights norms, for example. Uh, now, for us, this is the important point, norms. There are cultural norms, there are uh, religious norms, but we focus most importantly on human rights, which we consider as global norms. And here are some of our guests teaching on that subject here at Tacoma. For example, in cultural religious norms, uh, we uh, twice, as a matter of fact, discuss the circumcision, both in Hebrew or, or Jewish, Muslim, and other traditions, and how cultural and religious norms interact and evolve. This was based on a famous case in Germany where they were discussing whether a child would have a right to decide to be circumcised or not. Many of us are also inter interested in legal norms. And one of the things we, we experience here in this very place is a conf conflict of norms sometimes. We have federal, state, uh, religious, cultural norms, and sometimes they clash. Uh, gender norms, as a matter of fact, uh, here's uh, uh, Larry who uh, taught us about heteronormativity uh, and uh, also the feminists, here are some of them who have visited us, uh, insisting on that point, how we uh, uh, consider gender in terms of norms, what's normal, what's not. And uh, here are some practical applications uh, now uh, towards the end. We have monthly meetings, either in Seattle or here. We have the philosopher on the table, including we publish this uh, bulletin uh, here in Tacoma. Uh, we also have conferences. Uh, you can recognize some of your students there. Uh, this is, was here in Tacoma, an international conference on ethics and normativity. It was uh, last year. Uh, we also have a study abroad in Germany and Brazil that Jochen Reusch and, and myself, we normally take 10 to 15 students, uh, and the focus has been also on norms, uh, human rights, uh, uh, cosmopolitanism, and interaction with our partners in Germany. 
public lectures. We've had some great visitors such as Sela Ben Habib and Reiner Forst, and, and through the funding of the Simpson Center and uh, OGA, we have very nice publicity so we can attract a lot of people, uh, as you can see over there. And then, of course, international conference. This is the last one we organized one week before the elections. Of course, we're predicting some things, and in, in our prediction didn't go the way we had thought. Uh, and that has actually changed our research. As a matter of fact, based on that, we had an assumption that norms evolve. Normative innovation, right? Things go, and we even publish a bunch of books on those issues. But now we realize, and their elections here point out that norms can evolve, but they also regression. And now our new uh, project precisely to address this. How do we account for progressive and regressive movements in norm development? Uh, in sum, here's what we have. We have this no, no, cluster involving all those partners up there here in, uh, within UW. An important partnership in, in Frankfurt with the critical theory, theory tradition that's been going on for over 100 years. Uh, we have expanded partnerships in order to question Eurocentric assumptions and now working with several universities in five different continents. Uh, make sure we have no Latin America, Africa, North America, Asia, and of course Europe, continue our partnership with them. And this has yielded a lot of uh, innovative research on human rights global citizenship, cosmopolitanism, immigration is a big deal for us right now, and uh, very practical activities that affect and impact our students and our faculty here. So including study abroad, international conference, exchange, joint courses, reading groups, uh, uh, COIL uh, per internet, we have a couple of courses that we, where we partner with some other uh, institutions in Germany, in Brazil, uh, and of course also some publications as I mentioned here. One thing I'd like to do, we have a little, a little flyer about the, I should have brought more, uh, but in case you're curious, just take a look. And finally, uh, one of the things that uh, has allowed us to do, to have some funding for this, I'm also the research ambassador for the German ambassy, um, embassy here, and we've got a lot of funding from DAAD, and this has helped us a lot. I hope this is interesting. Thank you very much.